if you have canine guidance and you have a steeper guidance. If you have very shallow guidance and if you're doing veneers and fours and fives, then there is a risk that patient can knock those veneers off. patient who breaks that posterior restoration frequently, if you do, then you need to look into canine rising method and see if it's appropriate for your patient. In this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step procedure on how to build canine risers. Before we start, let me tell you what is canine riser. It's simply a composite bonding on palatal surface of the canine. That's as simple as that. It is used to steepen the canine guidance. What are the three key objectives we are trying to achieve when we are using canine risers? Number one is muscle relaxation. When you use canine for canine guidance, you are relaxing the muscles rather than using molars or even premolars for lateral guidance. And that's the reason we are trying to choose canine for, can uh, for, for the guidance, for lateral guidance, because we reduce the muscle forces. So number one is muscle relaxation. The other uh, thing is that it's conservative and minimally invasive. In order to treat the posterior teeth and you want to stay away from the posterior guidance, you can use canine risers, which is minimally invasive and cheaper for patients to use. And number three is that you can get much more cosmetic restorations done for posterior teeth if you have canine guidance and you have a steeper guidance. If you have very shallow guidance and if you're doing veneers and fours and fives, then there is a risk that patient can knock those veneers off. By steepening the guidance, you can get nicer length of the veneers on the premolars because they are not guiding. So these are the three objectives we are trying to achieve when we build canine risers. And the advantage of using canine risers is that there is no change in posterior occlusion. You're not raising OVD, so it's much easier. You can do directly without any expensive wax up if you're just using a couple of canines. It's easy technique to use and I'll show you in a minute how to use it and it reduces the treatment time. So it's much, much easier to use canine risers for multiple reasons. So you may be wondering how to build these canine risers. There are three steps involved in building canine risers. Step number one is initial assessment and ICP check. So you need to make sure that you are assessing patient's occlusion properly and then I use black articulating paper, ask patient to tap close and see where is my ICP contact points are uh, and make sure that you mark them really well. Then I will build the canine incisal to that ICP point. So I will etch prime bond the canine and then put composite incisal to that black dot which you created. Make sure it doesn't get washed away. So once you have that black dot created, you put composite incisal freehand just to build shape of the canine and cure it. And that step number three is once you cured it, you then going to adjust it tiny bit in order to get the guidance nice and smooth and steep enough. You don't want too much steep so that the teeth are locked. You want enough steepness so it's steep enough but patient can move their jaws uh, nicely. If they get locked, then there is a risk that patients start getting TMJ pain. So make sure that you got freedom a little bit for patient to move but also smooth guiding. And that's what the step three is. So it's as simple as that. It's, it's easier than doing class two restoration. Okay, so let me just show you in diagrammatic way. So number one, there's a red dot where there's an ICP point. And as you can see that I've added composite, which is in blue. And once I've done that, I'm now checking the guidance and making sure that the guidance is steep enough the way I want to. And this is a clinical scenario here where patient had upper left five missing Patient came for implant. When patient was guiding, patient was using posterior teeth because you can see there is a gap where the canine is. And because of that, when patient was doing lateral excursion, he was using five, six, and seven, uh, four, six, and seven for lateral guidance. And when, when I placed the implant, he was also guiding on that implant. So I wanted to protect my implant. So what I did is canine riser where you can see very tiny composites, nothing much, very small composite, and that then leads to disclusion of the premolars and molars and now canine is guiding. And you can see here through and through going through over the edge and still canine is helping. And you, can, you can't even tell how much material I've added on the palatal aspect of the canine. So it's that simple and that minimal. You can do it within 15, 20 minutes, literally. 
um, a, the whole treatment plan. So it's not really complicated procedure. And that's where I placed composite. Now, you can get a little bit more advanced. So this patient came to see me for upper left two, which kept breaking. So the dentist initially planned for four veneers, then patient kept breaking veneer, then dentist turned into a crown, upper left two, and patient decoronated the crown, then dentist put a post in the crown, and patient broke that as well. And you can see why, because you can see there is a space between lower canine and upper canine. So when patient was going in a lateral excursion, patient was knocking that lateral incisor off. And that was the reason because canine was rotated. So the canine wasn't helping. So what I did was I built, I mounted the model, did a waxer because patient wanted some cosmetic work anteriorly done as well. And then I built the composites using my indices from the wax up so that I can get the guidance. And you can see here that the lateral guidance the, on the on the right side of the photo, the canine has got two lines. And the reason is canine is doing lateral and protrusive guidance. And the reason for that is because the anterior front three teeth, they're all post and core restorations. I don't like to have protrusive guidance or lateral guidance on my post and core restorations. They were historically done, so I didn't want to change the post and core restoration. And that's why this is the guidance I went for. And then obviously I've did the restoration and patients quite happy with that. No OVD was raised here. Patients just smiling like that so that you feel that, you know, I've raised OVD, but OVD wasn't raised. And this is a very easy technique to use. If Even if, you, if you're doing simple canine risers, then as I said, you can do it within 15, 20 minutes. You don't need to do diagnostic wax up. You can do freehand. Just make sure you have the ICP contact point built incisal to your contact point and check the occlusion. You can even do it like a mock-up and show it to patient because sometimes patient can feel it. If you build a bit too thick, then patient can start knocking that composite. So again, you need to make sure you assess that, but otherwise it's the most conservative treatment or technique you can learn. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then go to the description section and click on the link below where I have created eight part email series discussing these points and I feel that it will be really helpful for you. And if you again like the video, then click and subscribe the channel and I'll see you in the next video.